Hello, so this is a PCB I designed recently. It goes in an RC plane and provides redundant power, voltage monitoring, and alarms if any of the voltage sources are getting too low. I'll probably talk about it in a different video in detail, but the focus of this video is see all these little SMD components? We're going to learn how to solder those on easily. So the method I'm going to describe is using what's called a solder mask. So basically, you line up the solder mask like this. And then you clamp it down and use solder paste. And then you can put it on a hot pad or in an oven to finish the job. And that'll get you 90% of the way there. So this is Mylar. Uh, 0.1 millimeter thickness. You can probably get it from like Staples or a lot of stores. I just ordered this off Amazon. It was less than $10 and I think it'll last me for many years. Um, an alternative is you can get a steel sheet. A lot of times when you order the PCBs they'll offer that. But it's usually an extra cost of about $20 and I'm sure it adds to shipping as well. And it's not really necessary because I think this does an excellent job for a fraction of the price. Um, another method is you can 3D print. I tried that. Um, I used a 0.4 nozzle and found that it was too thick and I was unable to resolve the detail so the results were subpar. Um, the paste was going on too thick and I was getting too much on there. It might be resolvable by using a 0.25 nozzle but this works so well, I never got around to trying it. Um, another way is you can take copper and etch it with a chemical process. That looks fairly promising. Of course, you got to deal with the chemicals, but I'll link in the description how to do that. I haven't actually tried it. All right, so how do you cut this mylar? Well, I tried using a vinyl cutter, but I found that I was unable to get the detail again. It might again be possible, but um, the second thing I tried was using my cheap CNC machine, and that was very turnkey and easy and gave me excellent results. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to talk about um, how I use the CNC machine, and I'll demo that so that you'll know how to do it. All right, so let's get on to the computer part. Of course, being a computer, there's lots of different software options and lots of ways to do this, so I'm just going to give you a way that I do it. So the software I'm using is KiCad to design the PCB. Any software that will export Gerber files will work, which I think is just about all of them. So here's my loaded up design. So let's go ahead and get rid of all the layers and focus on just the ones that we care about. So I will hide all layers. And the ones that we care about are the front paste. Um, because that is what we're working on. So this will give, this is where all of the SMD component pads are. And that's where we want to make our cuts. And the other one is the edge cuts. Um, this all depends on if you want to cut out the exterior of the board or not. That's just going to come down to your clamping strategy. For me, I do it. Okay. So to get those exported as Gerber's, I'm sure you've done this, but we'll do it quickly. Plot. And this is set up to send it to a fab or whatever. In this case, we only need the front paste and the edge cuts. Plot. Okay? So that wrote them out as Gerber files. All right. So now we're done with this program. And now we need to take those Gerber files and convert them into a G code file that the CNC machine can understand. So one program that I would really like to use for that is CamBam. It does a great job, but it is paid software. Um, you get 40 free sessions, but then you have to pay. So instead, I'm going to use the slightly less easy to use, but completely free flat cam. Even though I'm in Linux here, I'm using the Windows version because the Linux version keeps breaking on me due to Python upgrades that Ubuntu is doing. Okay, so here it is. All we do to start is open up some Gerber files. Okay. 
All right, so we got our front paste and our edge cuts. Those are the two we care about. Okay, so there they are. All right, edge cuts is straightforward, so we'll do the paste one, which is a little less straightforward. So you can just cut this. So here's what I would like to do, but it doesn't work. I would like to say isolation routing, cut on the inside, because you don't want to cut on the outside or the holes will be bigger than what you want. And go. Unfortunately, it didn't actually do anything. I don't know if it's a bug or something. Probably a bug. I don't know. It doesn't work uh, for me. So what I do instead is a little bit of a hacky workaround. So I pick it and then I say um, Gerber editor. <laughs> then I select all these and I say transform up here. And then I apply a buffer of negative 0.2. So this is the supposed size of my bit and then click buffer. And wait for it to do its thing and then i say edit exeter exit editor and yes save okay so now i have two copies i have the original copy which shows up in green here and my new copy which shows up in blue i'm going to use the blue copy so when i cut on the outside of the blue copy i'm actually getting the correct size that i want even though it's cutting on the outside so hopefully that makes sense all right so here's the original let me open it up. The one that doesn't say edit is the original. I'm going to delete that one so that I don't accidentally use it. And now we're just left with the blue shrunk copy. So that's the one that we'll use. So we click on that. We click properties, isolation routing. Okay. For bits, uh, it's got this V-bit calculator thing, which I never use. <clears throat> I just use C1.2, so that's the size of the cuts I'm assuming are going to be made, and it will be pretty close. Okay, one pass is fine because we're just cutting through mylar, isolation type full, all that looks fine. Generate. Okay, so here's the cuts that it made, those red lines there. Or I should say the geometry, we haven't done the cuts yet. So for the actual cuts, we got to put in some more parameters. So we want the Z. So the mylar is 0.1 millimeter thick, so we'll cut down 0.2, negative 0.2. Uh, these are all fine, except I'll increase the feed rate from 120 to 300. That'll make it cut faster. Um, mylar is just plastic, so it should have no trouble with that feed rate. Um, end move. This is optional. I just put 0, 0. That just makes the bit return to its starting point when it's done cutting. Okay, that's it and I generate. Okay, so now you can see all the cuts in there or the paths that the tool is going to make. And there's not much left to do other than save CNC code. I've already done this, so you can see that there's already something there, but I'll just overwrite it. Okay, we're done with all that. Um, we can hide this stuff if you want. I'd like to. So you just disable Disable. It's still there. It's just not being drawn. We'll keep this one around. We could disable it. Um, so now I picked edge cuts, which is this outside. So we're going to cut it out. This is optional if you want to cut it out with scissors or not at all. It all just depends on how you plan on clamping it down. But here's how you cut it out. So you click on it and you say cut out tool. Okay, tool diameter is 0.2. Cut Z is negative 0 0.2. Um, Multi-depth, we don't need, but we may keep it in there. I don't think it really matters. As far as bridge, that if you have bridge on, it'll keep little tabs in there. You got to cut out with scissors. Um, if you say no bridge, which I'm going to say, then it'll just cut it out. The reason I'm saying no is because I'm using double. So I'm going to use double-sided tape to put secure the mylar. If you didn't do that, you might want to keep the bridges. Okay. Generate geometry. All right. 
Um, so now, okay, here we are on the geometry. I don't know why I had to click on that, but here we are. Check everything over again. Uh, feed rate, we want to be 300 in this case. Again, if you pick 120, it probably wouldn't hurt anything, but it would just take longer. Um, all that looks fine. Pick our zero, zero again. Generate CNC job. Okay. Save it. And right there. Yes. Okay. So now we have our two CNC jobs. All right. So here we are at the CNC machine ready to go. As far as cuts are concerned, this is a fairly easy one. Um, I think you could probably be successful with not much experience. As far as details, I'm just using the 20 degree bit that came with the machine. I have it zeroed so that it's zero, zero, zero. It's just touching the mylar. And I'm using double sided tape to attach the mylar to the plate. Um, I like the double sided tape because then when you peel it away, all the parts that you cut off, cut off will stick to the tape, which is nice. For software, I'm using Candle, which is free software that um, you can usually comes with the machines, but I just got this off the internet. And um, I like to use it because it works well for PCBs, but for this particular task, just about anything will work. So as far as I know, everything is good to go. I have it cutting down just 0.2 millimeters. If it doesn't cut all the way through, all the way across, which is quite possible, then I'll just do another pass. So let's go ahead and start. So for some reason it went up to 10 millimeter, because I told it to, but now it's going to start cutting once it goes down. And it's cutting. So you can see it cutting. Okay, it's done and it looks like it made some nice progress. <sighs> so now what I'm going to do is just cut out the outline. So open and go edge cuts open and that'll just cut out the outside real quick. So straightforward should already be zeroed out. All right, I use some 400 grit sandpaper to get rid of all the burrs. Of course it clouds up the mylar, but it doesn't matter because there's gonna be solder paste on this very soon anyway. All that matters is that it stops the solder, and it will. Um, and I also wore one of these, and then I also, just to check it carefully, and then I also used a X-Acto knife just to clean up a few spots. So I think it's pretty good. I'll take another look before I finish, but you can stick it on there and see that it looks like it's going to work just fine. Moving on, you got this little bucket here of um, solder paste, and I think it costs like $10, $11. Um, you just put it on with a spatula, and the mylar keeps it from going in the wrong spots. So I can't really do it, and film at the same time so I'll just do it and with off camera and then show the results so there it all is all spread on I find it's helpful to use one of these to look for gaps and now that it's on the only thing left to do is unscrew this and peel it off somewhat carefully so you don't slide it so we just peel it up and off Come. I'll watch that later, but there we go. A reasonable amount of stuff in all the right places. Um, so yeah, the 
last step is just to take a pair of tweezers and put everything where it goes using my guide here. And probably as I put them on, I'll just make a little mark on there. All right, I took tweezers and put all the parts on the board. So the next step is the most satisfying part, in my opinion. Um, I got this thing on Amazon for $13, I think. Uh, a little skeptical that it would have worked well, but it actually works quite well. You just put it on there and turn it on, and it gets to about the right temperature, 250-some Celsius. And then you just watch it, and as soon as it's ready, you just slide it off. So that is what I'm going to do. All right, I'm just going to use this particle board here. So all I have to do now is turn it on. And it just takes a few minutes. Um, I might speed up the video to make it more interesting. But we'll just keep an eye on it and watch. Okay, I think things are in pretty good shape now, so I'm just going to slide this off the board and let it cool. All right, I'm just going to end with a quick demo of this thing now that it's all built up. Um, so it's a redundant power supply, so um, either one power to either one will result in power in the output, and at the same time it monitors both. Um, the monitoring is all passive, so it doesn't affect the power going through, but it can alert you if there's an issue. So you turn one on, you can see that only one's on and it's not happy. You can turn another one on and it is happy. You can take the voltage down too low on one of them and now it's unhappy again. And eventually it will start to alert like that. We'll just reset it. And that is how it works. So I hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you some ideas of how you can do your own um, SMD masking and layout. So have a great day.